uh, Matt, do you guys, do you have questions for coach? If you will, we'll follow up. All right. And then we'll jump back in the line. So, uh, Go ahead, Coach, uh, appreciate you, this, uh, your time. We can go ahead and start with an opening statement, and then we'll open up for questions. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare this one to a round of golf or a hole in golf. When you hit your tee ball really far left and you're in the rough, you're behind a tree, you punch it out because you have no other choice. You hit, you hit your third into the par four and you miss the green, and then you chip it in to make, make your par. But the only thing I know is you put a par on that scorecard and nobody's drawing pictures. And I told our team, I drew a big T on the, on the, on the whiteboard and I put a W in one column and an L in the other. And um, uh, then I put a mark under the W. That's what tonight was. We, we escaped in a very ugly fashion. Uh, give Nebraska a ton of credit. Nobody at the end of the year is going to draw pictures about this one, uh, but it's a W. And uh, we've got to got to learn from it. I want to give Nebraska a ton of credit because they've uh, uh, they played great and uh, they really slowed their tempo down tonight. Uh, they played with much better pace and and, and flow. And um, yet, I thought our our defense the second half uh, was very good. But w when our team doesn't pursue the ball, which we didn't pursue it tonight, we got out rebounded. Uh, when we're not pursuing the ball, uh, we're 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 not at our best, and, and that was the case tonight. All right, Robert Robert Rosenthal, go ahead and then uh, follow up with Andy Olson. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Coach, uh, Iowa scores 15 in a row, the last 10 in regulation, the first five in overtime. Uh, tell me about your superstar. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it was his time. And it, what, what is really unique is he had not played great. And he'd miss some opportunities that he normally doesn't. He'd miss some free throws. And, um, and yet, you know, you, 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 you dance with the, with the one you, you know, got you there. And, and that's, that's what we did. And uh, uh, he made big shots. He made, made a nice pass to Kofi. Um, and I'm just glad that uh, number 11 was, was, was on our team tonight. Uh, you only got, scoring from five players. So Io, Kofi, Trent, Adam Miller, and uh, Hawkins were the only five players to score. Does that concern you when you have a game like that? No, because I was – tonight was all about the defensive side. Um, I, it was, it was, I was, was going to ride those guys as, as hard as I could ride them. I, did, I was really comfortable with that group defensively. Um, you know, we'll spread those minutes out. Um, I knew we weren't sharp, and that was the group that I was I was going to ride with. And uh, uh, Coleman played great, um, but um, again, it was it was uh, kind of an out of character night for for from that standpoint. But uh, that's not a that won't be the norm. Hey, Andy Olson, uh, you're up, and then uh, Rob McCauley. Go ahead, Andy. Brad, what did I know? A lot has happened since then, but what did you tell the team in that first time out after going down nine nothing? Well, I told them. That, I mean, they would give us an opportunity to get back in the game, but we had to. Uh, I was really concerned because we gave up uh, Jacob Grandison, and I'm gonna. I, I was pretty critical of Jake all week in practice because he gave up back cut layup after back cut layup, and. Um, you know, it, it, it was – I told our coaching staff before the game, I said, Jake's going to give up the first first basket of the game on a back cut layup. And I told him about it before the game, and he did, still gave it up. Um, and, it, again, it's, it's one of those things that uh, he's got to get better at. And uh, uh, he wasn't dialed in and, and as, as he needed to be. And uh, they, they took advantage. And we had to get stops. We had to figure out how to get, get a couple stops. Uh, and then we got really passive on the offensive end. Uh, they do a great, they do a good job defensively. They're, they're, you know, I knew they were going to take Kofi away. They made his entries hard, and and uh, we didn't do a very good job of taking care of the ball. And and uh, we just had to settle down, and and we did that, and you know, kind of found a way to 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 make it make it competitive in, at the end of the half. You always call uh, these Big Ten games rock fights. Was this the definition of a rock fight? Yeah, I, you know, it, it's it. 
it was a uh, it was a game that I've been concerned about for a long time when they when it was set. You know, it's it's a it's a game that uh, um, you know we'd been talking about. You know, prior to we thought we were playing Michigan on the schedule. Uh, you're going to get two top five teams or top six teams playing, and then all of a sudden it's not it's it's not Michigan. It's a team who's really struggling, and all of a sudden this becomes that trap game. And uh, we practiced not very good yesterday, and our shoot around was horrible today. I thought our effort was okay. It was just our mental um, uh, focus and 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 tenacity. And like I said, when we don't chase balls. Um, you know, that's a pretty good sign to me. Thanks, Brad. Okay, I'm going to go. Sorry, Rob, just a moment. I'm going to go with Scott and Matt since we skipped them for us. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Brad. You know, Nebraska threw a, several different guys at Kofi and, you know, just made catches tough for him early. What was maybe key to getting him uh, on track a little bit? Well, they do a great job of it. And if you look at their stats over the course of, of, of the season – you know, I think uh, Minnesota took 36 threes at home. Uh, Wisconsin came in here and took 32. And then you look in the league play, I mean, their games have been seven, eight, nine. They've been close games. Uh, and it's because their defense. And they, they force you to make threes. And, you know, we talked a lot about not being able to be, uh, you know, have, have stretches where we take five, six, seven threes. Uh, once we drove the ball and got a little movement, uh, you know, we were able to get him the ball. But, again, they uh, give their defense a lot of credit because they did a nice job with it. And just, you know, with your defense on that last possession and regulation, you know, Io ends up getting the stop on McGowan's. But it seemed like Fred was pretty upset about just not getting anything there. What – was that just sort of kind of put a cap on maybe that defensive performance to close out you know, the second half? Yeah, it was a great switch. A great late game switch by two veteran players, Trent and Io, uh, and just just force them. And they run a little wrap play off the backside of that. Somehow it got blown up, um, and uh, but it, it was going to be an isolation, and and uh, we were able to uh, again to play great defense and kind of thwart that 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 attempt. Thank you, hey, Matt Stevens. You're up, and then Rob. Go ahead, Matt. Brad, I guess the question I was going to ask Io was, I mean, when you're when Io's on a heater like that, like how much of a concern is it for you as a coach that, you know, the four other guys are just standing around and watching? Um, and is there a counter to, hey, they've got 60 years of coaching experience on that bench. You know, the idea is to not let Io turn the corner and go toward the rim. Like at what point do you go, hey, we have to figure out what they're going to do if they take that away? They can have all the years on the bench they want to have. They still got to get their players to stop it. Uh, and our, our guys aren't just out there standing. Our guys are out there, you know, spotted up and spaced up. And, and we work on those situations literally uh, four or five times a week. And, uh, you know, you, you, put, you put the ball in, in playmakers' hands uh, to make plays. And sometimes it's just about going to get one yourself. He got downhill into the rim. Uh, you know, we were in one set, uh, you know, five straight times. And, I mean, he got to the rim, got fouled. Uh, and, you know, I wasn't born last weekend. I'm going to keep running the same play till they guard it. But, uh, uh, again, those guys are in positions to space and, and make shots if, if need be. I guess my follow-up, I'll ask you about a player who didn't score tonight again, and, and DeMonte. I'll give you another opportunity to talk about maybe how he got you a W tonight. by, by And the box score might not indicate what he did. I mean, it, it was phenomenal. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal defensive effort. It was uh, uh, his rebounding, his ability. Again, when they have four perimeter guys like that on the floor all the time, who uh, his switches, they've got size, they've got matchups. DeMonte guarded everybody from their point guard uh, to their power forward. And, and that versatility was huge. And his veteran uh, knowledge and experience uh, was a huge factor in that tonight. All right, go ahead, Rob, and then Alec on deck. Go ahead, Rob. This will be my only question, Alec. So, uh, Georgie got about the same amount of time that Jake did, and, uh, of course, DeMonte brought you home. Is there anything to read into that, or is it just the matchups? Uh, and, and and Coleman got all that time, of course. We talk about no, it was, it was very much about what I felt comfortable with defensively. 
uh, tonight. And again, they, you know, McGowan's got 20 attempts up tonight. Uh, they were running a little high ball screen. Uh, and Kofi was doing an elite job of, of protecting that rim and making them shoot over him. And uh, uh, that was something I just, I felt really comfortable with at that time. So uh, hence Georgie's uh, minutes were down, but, um, and then Coleman was great. Coleman's been really good in practice. So, uh, and then I liked his versatility with size, being able to guard their, their perimeter guys as well. Okay, go ahead, Alec. And then uh, Joey on deck. Yeah, Coach, if my math's right, and it might not be, I'm pretty sure Kofi has 25 double-doubles now in 50 career games. Is that something you've ever seen before? And what kind of efficiency does that say? Well, Derek just told me it's 26. So, no, that's that's been, that's being pretty productive, especially uh, – I'll tell you what's really impressive about that. It's his first two years of college. It's not somebody doing it on the back end of their career when they've been in a weight room. They've, they've seen all the, everything for, for two years. He's doing this as a, as a freshman and sophomore. And uh, again, he was um, uh, imposes his, his will and his strength and his girth and everything else on people. And, and that wears you out over the course of time and uh, pretty impressive. And then shifting gears a little bit, Adam tied a career high tonight, I think, with seven rebounds, second time he's done that this season. What is his rebounding ability like? Because there's nights where he really rebounds well, like he did tonight, and then there's other nights where he's just not as active on the glass. Yeah, we need that consistency. We need him to rebound. And, again, we, we knew that they took a lot of threes. So, you know, we have a saying, long rebound, long shots equal long rebounds, and, and our guards have to go chase that. And, and uh, again, uh, you know, he was fabulous tonight. And again, I felt very comfortable with him on the defensive end. And, and uh, he saw the ball go in tonight and uh, he, he had seven rebounds. He's capable of that every night. All right, Thanks. Joey. Joey, you're up. Jeremy on deck. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, Brad, what does it say about your guys' team? And I know it's just one in the win column, but what could this mean going forward to kind of save par here in this upstart game that was really just scheduled on Monday? Well, I, I mean, you've got to win games. I mean, winners win. I mean, winners win and losers lose. And, and uh, you know, early in, our, early in my, my career here with some of those teams, Joey, you knew we weren't winning those games. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to have veterans. It's nice to have guys with confidence. And, and we found a way to win. And, and that's, what, uh, that's what winners do. And you've got to win. Every, every season you go back and you look and there's always a game or two or three like this and you don't play your best and you can, and yet really good teams uh, find a way to win. And, and uh, we did that tonight. Is there anything about some of these guys like Io's freshman year, you get number five, Michigan come in, you play a, like top ranked team. Is there anything about that, that they've been on the other end of this and they've kind of seen what it takes to get out of here. Is there anything that translate with, with that experience? Well, I'm sure there is. It's not something we talk about a, lo a lot, but I mean, they've obviously witnessed, uh, you know, the, the Michigan States and, and whoever it's been that, you know, Purdue or first year or two that was, was so great and, you know, come in and just kind of, you know, maybe not be their best. And, and all of a sudden they flip that switch. And, and again, that's what, uh, that's what we were able to do. And, and uh, especially Iowa. Thanks, Fred. Okay. We'll go with Jeremy and then uh, Brandon to uh, wrap it up. So go ahead, Jeremy. Hey, Brad, uh, what changes for Io in these last four or five minutes of games? It's winning time. I, you know, I, he's, he's, he's that guy. He's got the it. You know, it, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. He's been in that situation his whole life. He's confident. He's not afraid. Um, Jeremy, I mean, he got good looks throughout the, throughout the game, and he missed them put the game on the line, that sucker, nothing but the bottom of the net. And he missed free throws, put the game on the line. He makes free throws. And uh, it's just the it factor. I mean, he's a, he's a mentally very, very tough kid. He's not afraid. And he's, he's, he's just got that ability to flip a switch that says, Hey, I'm gonna win the game and, and, and go do it. And, and what do you have to do as a coach there? Do you just get out of the way or, and, and what do you do to counter that if you're, a coach because it didn't seem like Nebraska had any counter to that. Well, it's hard. I mean, he's really good because he's really good with the ball. My biggest challenge, Jeremy, is 
is is figuring out where on the floor to put it. And and uh, you know they wanted to weaken him and force him to his left hand all night. And okay, so you you put him in, you put him and he he rejected two of them. Um, you know sometimes you don't want to run a screen up there to him. I mean the last play of the game, uh, we didn't run we didn't run a screen up to him, but they ran and doubled him anyway. Uh, so you know it, it's just a uh, he's got an unbel- unbelievable ability. He's canny. He's smart. Uh, and he's very hard to guard. Thanks, Brad. All right, and then this Brandon, you'll be uh, wrap things up tonight. So go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Brad, uh, you guys actually got out rebounded tonight. What do you kind of attribute that to? Lack of pursuing the ball, lack of effort. That their desire was higher than ours. Uh, like I said, I you know, I don't want to say I saw this coming, but I saw this coming. And we were horrible in shoot around today. I really got on them, and we didn't practice great and. Um, again, it's, it's a mental thing with us that, uh, it happens sometimes. It's not uncommon to, it happens to every team in the country. They lose it. You look up, they lose a game. They shouldn't. And you're like, wow, well, it's usually an effort thing. And tonight was an effort thing. And, and I look solely at our rebounding. When we get out rebounded, it's usually because we're not pursuing the ball very well. And then was this another chapter for IO in his case for big 10 player of the year? Just, just keep writing them. He just keeps writing them. I don't know what the last the last chapter is going to look like, but the middle chapters are damn hellacious. I know that. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. All right, Coach. Thank you. Have a safe trip home, and uh, we'll see you back in Champaign. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.